Jai Tsuji Clinic has recently opened in a city to serve local communities. Food and care packages were distributed to needy families and local organizations in Chile. Welcome to Dad Headlines, I'm Jenny Lee. Thank you for joining us. Daling Tsuji Hospital celebrated its 20th anniversary on August 13, and also the opening of its new chapter. The Jiayi Tsuji Clinic was officially opened on this day to serve local residents. Here's more. With support from Daling Tsuji Hospital, Jiayi Tsuji Clinic is officially open on this day, with over 60 borough heads attending the opening ceremony. The mayor also gives words of encouragement. 20 years later on the same day, also on August 13th, there came a Tsuji clinic in the city of Jiayi. It has four departments and are staffed by the best doctors, so it's a plus to our city of Jiayi. What should we do to transmit the care and love while we conduct our medical care? We hope to extend it in Jiayi. This date is also the 20th anniversary of Daling Tsuji Hospital, and everyone shares the joy with attendees. Over 20 years, this hospital has made quite an improvement. The most important thing is that the medical network of Daling Tsuji Hospital has slowly included emergency care to chronic care, from major hospitals to communities, and from local to international. The medical staff take this group photo together with smiles on their faces. This will be their best memory and also a very touching scene. Malaysia's Malacca had a severe thunderstorm on August 11th, impacting Malin Chinese Elementary School. The school's rooftops were blown away and several students were injured. City volunteers arrived to the scene to help to evacuate the students and assist local neighborhood. On August 11th, a thunderstorm struck multiple districts in Malacca, and the Malin Chinese Elementary School was impacted the most, with 28 students injured. The heavy rain continued and the tree was shaking, then fell down. We all hit and some people have cuts on their legs or hands. Some people got hurt. The thunder and the wind isn't like this now. There was a spiral creating a lot of wind pressure and thunders. When I saw the damages, I was very scared. I never thought it could get this serious. I thought that we just had to replace a few tiles, but this is not the case. There are five classrooms damaged over there, and there should be four or five more to fix. After the windstorm disaster, policemen, firefighters, and medical crews have arrived at the school. Tsuji volunteers also arrived during the after-school period to care and help locals. Because under this situation, we must help them. When the parent-teacher committee director saw us, they led us into the school and told us that the most important thing to do now is to let parents take their children home. <laughs> Due to the case of parents wanting their kids to go home first, our course materials, student bags, books are now all wet due to the storm. But on the bright side, the children are still here, and this is very important. We bring the children back to their parents, and they feel safe, too. The storm had took away at least 10 rooftops around the area. There are cars being crushed by fallen trees. Different charity organizations will work together to conduct disaster relief work. After being closed for three months since the COVID-19 outbreak, Tsuji Recycling Station Center in Penang, Malaysia, finally reopened on July 1st. The recyclables were dropped off in large quantities, resulting in manpower shortage. Despite having to maintain social distance, the volunteers are unwavering in the recycling effort. A lot of recyclables. Because of the movement control order, we cannot go out. In fact, many of these were brought during the new year. It has been about nine or ten months. Anyway, it's been a long time since I've been here before. Affected by the COVID-19 epidemic, GG Recycling Education Center was closed for more than three months because of the movement control order. It finally reopened on the 1st of July. The public was able to take the recyclables that had been held at home to the center. As a result, substantial recyclables were needed to be handled 
in the first week of the reopening. Once it opened, many people came out. At the time, the recyclables here were piled up like mountains, and we had not enough manpower to handle them. In face of manpower shortage, GG Frontiers took the challenge and insisted on opening the center every day. However, in order to comply with the regulations enforced by the Ministry of Health, the reopened Recycling Education Center had to follow a set of epidemic prevention procedures. The epidemic prevention procedures requires one person to take body temperature first. For the people with a smartphone, they can register their visit by scanning the QR code, while for those without such smartphones, we would ask them to fill in their information and contact number. We also ask them to keep a safety distance to three feet, just like this, and try not to put them together. When seeing people coming in, we would ask them to sanitize their hands first and don't bring germs in. Wash hands again after finishing recycling so as not to bring germs back home. As long as everyone does his part, we can then protect others. I missed this place during the movement control order and thought of coming to do recycling, but I could not come. The epidemic has not been resolved, but I'm not afraid to come to do recycling because I've worn a mask. Although I don't know who has touched these things, I think that should not be a problem. I will wash hands so it's fine. Chichi Frontier Hu Jingfang has done recycling for more than 10 years. Facing manpower shortage and the challenge of complying with epidemic prevention code, he still insisted on carrying out his mission of environmental education. We both live on the same planet, so we should try every means to reduce garbage and save resources. You need to think carefully whether you really need it or want it out of desire. I hope more people will get to know about environmental protection, so as to lessen the burden and the climate change on the Earth slowly. Protecting the environment is the responsibility of all mankind. By reducing material desires and sorting recyclables, it is hoped that the world will become better and better. In Malaysia, the Penang state government implemented a series of policies to reduce the use of plastic since 2009. However, the COVID-19 pandemic caused a surge of takeout and consumption in single-use plastics. Facing such challenge, the Penang Green Council has utilized social media to promote environmental awareness. Since 2009, Penang state government has implemented a series of policies to cut down use of plastics, including ban on free plastic bags, no plastic bags on Mondays, and banning the use of plastic straws. Through education, we raise the environmental awareness of the public. For a long time, Penang Green Council has had many conversations with store owners promoting the concept of circular economy. Circular economy aims to eliminate waste and promote the continued use of resources. It employs the concept of resources, product, and remanufacturing in a total circular process. After 11 years of hard work, the use of plastic in Penang has been lessened. However, the outbreak of COVID-19 has disrupted everything. <laughs> To take out a bowl of noodle soup, one uses two plastic bags and a small plastic bag for the sauce. The outbreak of pandemic has led to an increase in the use of plastic bags. The pandemic has affected many things. The Penang state government cannot do anything about it. Penang state government was going to stipulate a regulation regarding one-time use plastics. However, due to the pandemic, this will be postponed till next year. Regardless of the challenges, it is necessary to protect the environment. Penang Green Council is relying on social media to educate the public. What can the public do for the environment despite the pandemic? We encourage the public to bring their own lunch boxes when they want to take out food, change our daily habits and reduce the amount of garbage. On Saturdays, our city hall will collect recyclables from households. We have an app called Trash to Treasure. It provides the addresses of recycling centers. People can download this app and go to nearby recycling centers. 
Chichi's recycling stations have set up a good model. When recyclables are sorted well, they can be reused. Climate change has taken place and we must have awareness. We need sustainable development for Penang to be more eco-friendly. During the epidemic, as we protect ourselves, we should also remember to protect planet Earth. City volunteers cooperated with Nat Geo Run for the first time this year, providing food and water. In order to promote a plastic-free earth and vegetarianism, 9,000 rice balls in eco-friendly lunch boxes were provided. The delicious meal was prepared since 12 a.m. at the San Chong and Ban Chao Ciji grounds, ensuring a healthy and happy meal for runners. We have a goal! After the removal of the movement orders, the first large-scale road running event was held in Taipei. The venue was clean and tidy, thanks to volunteers. Refusing to use disposable utensils and welcoming eco-friendly alternatives, before the event, 5,000 eco-friendly bowls were washed as community volunteers gathered at Sanchong Sichi grounds. 40 volunteers showed up and took on different tasks. We'd rather wash more dishes, chopsticks, and spend more time on those tasks. This is to keep our earth clean. At the road running event, vegetarianism was selected to be a theme. A day before the event, in the early morning, Sichi volunteers were busy preparing rice balls for the runners. The road running event holds over 10,000 runners. Imagine 10,000 people eating meat. That would mean a lot of sacrifice. We have to reduce this. In order to make the freshest meals, Sichi volunteers began to make rice balls 12 in the morning. It is quite tough, but I think of my mother. She must be tired cooking at home. It's hot and I am sweaty. Not only the central and Sichi grounds was busy, the Sichi grounds in Banqiao had another task. We're very busy here and we're close to one another. It's very heartwarming. We don't use plastic bags and paper packages. We specially use our eco-friendly bowls along with our rice bowls. Freshly made rice balls arrive at the event venue early morning. The mobile kitchen also showed up, making 300 meals for participants. Plenty of young people volunteered to help. We can actually do more as an individual to reduce the use of disposable utensils. Reducing plastic usage and going vegetarian, the road running event proved to be eco-friendly. I have run for 10 years, but this is the first time I see eco-friendly meals provided by Tsuji brothers and sisters. We had a healthy meal, and after finishing the food, we wouldn't have to worry about polluting the environment. The meals provided were not like before, which was not environmentally friendly. The use of disposables were high, but at this event, it's better. In Chile, many families have been impacted by the epidemic. City volunteers have held food distribution to help impoverished families. In addition, they went to nursing home and an association serving hearing impaired people to deliver daily necessities. Volunteers are purchasing daily supplies and food in preparation of the distribution. During the epidemic time, city volunteers have come to the hypermarket for the 21st time. They know that we are helping people in need, so they are happy to help us purchase the supplies. City volunteers pack the supplies which will be delivered to 21 families whose members are hearing impaired. I'm the chairperson of this association. This association serves people who are hearing impaired. On the behalf of the families served by association, I appreciate you and Suji's help. We are very grateful. I hope the surprise given by Suji Foundation can help you get through the tough times. Later, we will have a gratitude ceremony. The soundless and subtle thing from the little boy touched all the volunteers. 
Meanwhile, Enterprise donated 180 sets of daily supplies, which include cleaning tools and warm indoor slippers, to help the seniors stay warm during the winter. On behalf of the seniors here, I want to thank you and thank God. The seniors have recovered, and there is no one diagnosed of the COVID-19. Despite the hardship in life, the aid recipients will be able to get through the tough times with city volunteer support. Kerat City volunteers continue to promote vegetarianism. Starting from April, they provided vegetarian lunch boxes for dialysis patients, encouraged them to go meatless to save lives. The delicious vegetarian dishes have inspired a patient to become a vegetarian. Have a look. Stir fry the ingredients over high flame and toasting them quickly. Gigi volunteers from Kidat are preparing vegetarian lunch boxes for kidney patients. Our cooking volunteers are willing to take up this task. Each group of us comes twice a week to cook different dishes for kidney patients. We went online to find what kind of vegetarian dishes we can cook and learned that some dishes cannot be consumed by kidney patients. To us, we also learned a lot. Although there are restrictions on diets, cooking volunteers can also make vegetarian dishes in different ways, changing the stereotype of a kidney patient, Chen Han being on vegetarianism. Just the tofu can be turned into many kinds of dishes. It feels the same as ordinary meat dishes, but just replace the meat with tofu to cook. It's also delicious. After tasting delicious vegetarian food, Chen Han Bin made a vow to adopt a meatless diet. His determination is arising from a life respecting heart. Dharma Master said that more than 2,000 lives could be killed in one second for making food for people. It's a second, not a minute. It's a little scary to know so many chickens, cows and sheep are killed. I'm also changing to eat vegetarian food for my health. Going meatless out of compassion, GG volunteers take the lead to promote vegetarianism with actions. The epidemic in Malaysia has slowed and various economic sectors have gradually opened up. However, many people are still facing difficulties in employment and life. City volunteers in Kera chapter care for families with dialysis patients to help them overcome difficulties. Here's a story. The streets are gradually regaining vitality, but for the families unemployed because of the pandemic are still suffering financial difficulties. In order to spend more time taking care of his mother who needs to undergo dialysis, Zhou Jinfa normally does odd jobs only, but now he doesn't even have any odd jobs. My mother is too weak to stay at home alone. If I'm not there when she falls down, it's very dangerous because no one will know. Because of this, I can't go out to work. To support this disadvantaged family with a kidney dialysis patient, Gigi volunteers reach out to help. I am very grateful to Cixi, which provided me with monthly subsidy initially. Then they taught me to apply for government welfare funds that eased a lot of my living burden. Another kidney patient, Zhang Li Cai, has been living in Thailand for many years. He came across the epidemic when he returned to Malaysia. With Chi Ji Volunteer's assistance, he could stay in the country to undergo kidney dialysis. I didn't expect the movement control order would last so long. The money I brought back, which was about 80 US dollars, was not enough. Knowing that Chi Ji's donation came from various parties, even though he has only little money left, he is still willing to donate part of it. The thing is, uh, we are in the difficulties. So you all came in the right time to help me. So the thing is, uh, I feel that uh, I should do something back for you all. You go, you think, uh, you wonder how much. It's not the amount that counts. It's a matter of how much you, you are sincere to help people. 
A Tsiji scholarship recipient, 18-year-old Suryanata lives in Jakarta with his mother. He suffers from Guillain-Barre syndrome, a rare disorder that weakens the muscles and causes paralysis. Suryanata was hospitalized and is now much better. Tsiji volunteers continue to visit and support him, wishing him well on the path of recovery. Sitting on the ground and moving around with both hands, 18-year-old Suryanta suffers from Guillain-Barre syndrome. The sickness paralyzes him. Standing is a problem. This sickness made me unable to stand up. Going to the restroom is tough. A young man paralyzed with a rare disease. This made the mother worry about him. The mother takes care of Suryanta while he was hospitalized. I take care of him alone and I have great pressure. In the morning I go to work and at night I finally have time to take care of my son. He has been hospitalized for three weeks and during this time it was how I took care of him. After treatment, Suryanta is slowly recovering. He has been eagerly doing exercises to improve his muscle memory. Volunteers visited him and brought him blessings and words of encouragement. I hope I can recover soon because of sickness I couldn't do anything. I want to recover faster so I can work. At first I thought he had a normal sickness, but afterwards I realized this illness was very serious and I was shocked. But now I see his improvement and that he doesn't have to stay in bed all the time. I'm happy for him. Suryanta, with his mother's care and Tsuji volunteers' encouragement, is now filled with confidence and strength. Here's the hoping that he may recover soon and continue pursuing his dreams. In Nantou, Taiwan, an 82-year-old recycling volunteer is nicknamed MacGyver at Zhusan Recycling Station. He often makes ingenious tools and carts out of recycled materials. In this recycling station, many volunteers are in their 80s, but they are doing their best to help the environment. Volunteer put sorted recyclables on the cart and push it to the storage place, saving time and energy. <laughs> Unwanted sheet is tied to the frame and turned into umbrella. We will not be exposed to the sun or rain. Zhang Weigao is a retired junior middle school craft teacher, known as MacGyver, with ingenuity and creativity. He replaced the light switch to the broken fan. The abundant racks are made into mobile tour carts. They can be moved without costing money. All the tools can be found here. Recycle and cherish the resources are the points of doing recycling. Teacher Zhang is 82 years old, is doing that and being creative. Doing recycling regardless of age is one of the characteristics of Zhusan Recycling Station. The oldest volunteer is 98 years old. The average age here is about 70 to 80 years old. Like today, we probably have more than 30 volunteers coming to do recycling. Volunteers use their creativity to reuse the recycled material to extend their life and also protect the earth. Shenyang Tsiji volunteers in China have held child parent events at the recycling station to educate the public about recycling. We'll leave you with the footage. Thank you for watching. See you next time.